Thank you for that special song. <laughs> Nobody can sing it like Jimmy Swagger. Amen. Good to have you at a Word from the Word broadcast. This is Brother Clay. Sunday afternoon, the 28th of February, 2021. And we hope all of you had a good day. Um, we had a good church service today. Had some good special singing and good sermon on the God of a Second Chance. Brother Eric quotes there in the comment section, praise the Lord for second chances. And, uh, of course, Preacher always does a good job preaching. And, and uh, had some folks around the altar praying. And, and boy, when I got home, I ate and went to bed. And it was hard to get up this afternoon. <laughs> but I'm up and dressed and ready to preach, proclaim, amen. And uh, appreciate everyone that tunes in, the ones that will tune in later. We hope you'll hit the share button and help us out on Facebook. And uh, hit the share button, hit the public button. And thank you for everyone that sends out invitations. I saw where one of our brothers in the Lord put on his wall for our people to tune in. That's all we can do is try. Thank you for, uh, for uh, letting folks know about my Instagram. I have a few every once in a while, about a couple, a couple every week, I think. But some of the people that send you requests, you know, you kind of have to kind of look and watch stuff. But uh, uh, I'm on Instagram at Clay Cordell 62 And, of course, this Hope in the Lord broadcast, that's the name of the Sunday evening 8 p.m. broadcast, is put on our YouTube channel. If you go there, subscribe to the channel. And... Uh, Leave, leave us a note letting us know where you watch from and if you enjoyed it or not. <laughs> all right, let's gather in corporate prayer from all over. Different states are tuning in. We have North Carolina, Virginia, and South Carolina, and others will be tuning in. Let us know if you're watching from in what state and also what country you're watching from. We had another viewer, I believe it was this morning, from India. So we've already put pins on our world map from India. So... Uh, Let's go to the Lord in prayer. We continue our series of sermons on names of Jesus in the Bible. And uh, we can be on this a long time. And that's okay to be on, on the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, if you lift me up, I'll draw all men unto himself. So it's all about him anyway. Father, bless the broadcast as we lift Jesus up as the Savior of the world, the only Savior. We pray sinners nearest to hell will be saved and we also pray for the prodigals that used to serve you that you'll reclaim them because you are a god of many chances a second chance failure with the father is not final as dr joe alters preached all over the country for years in that special sermon he preaches and revivals and then lord last of all for all of us that are saved and washed in your divine blood and born again and for those of us who have put our total trust in Jesus Christ alone and his death, burial, and resurrection for our salvation, we pray that you'll give us wisdom, love, power, anointing, and blessing to be a blessing. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So we uh, begin our broadcast today. I'll tell you where our scriptures, if you want to write these down, pull up your Bible, Word of God on your phone. Uh, the scriptures for the message tonight are going to be coming out of Isaiah chapter 35 and John 14, 6. So we'll be there. But before we go into the message, we uh, want to go to our wisdom corner and get some more wisdom principles. I had a pastor's wife send me a message, said that she watches the broadcast and um, the word for the word broadcast, which airs every day during the week, twice a day when I'm off. And she said that she enjoys the wisdom principles. And we are supposed, if we are lack wisdom, we're supposed to ask the Lord. and He'll give it to us. And we need wisdom. So I want to give you several wisdom principles. <clears throat> I hope these are a blessing to you. Number one, your life is whatever you choose to remember. Uh, number two, 
When you want something you've never had, you must do something you've never done. And number three, what you repeat repeatedly hear, you eventually believe. So Lord just seemed to speak in my spirit right there. We that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen, somebody. Um, in terms of talking about unstoppable passions, we all have a passion. We hope our passion is for the Lord. Uh, here's another principle to think about. Every tragedy begins with the wrong conversation with the wrong person. Samson never forgot his introduction to Delilah. Just at Judges 16.4, and it came to pass afterwards that he loved a woman in the valley of Sarek whose name was Delilah. The law of eventuality is deciding your life. So we need to guard who we allow access into our lives. And then, of course, you must have the mind of Christ to discern your assignment. For who have known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. 1 Corinthians 2.16 <clears throat> In terms of proof of love is the investment of your time. Remember Jesus at the woman at the well in Samaria. He revealed his love to her. In John 4, in John 4 10, Jesus answered and said unto her, talking about he was investing his time uh, to talk to her about the living water that he was about to give her where she'll never thirst again if she would trust him as her personal Lord, Lord and Savior, which she did. She became an evangelist. And almost the entire city or town she lived in got saved. Uh, Jesus answered and said to her, if thou knewest the gift of God, and salvation is a gift. Everything, everything from the Lord is a gift of his grace. And who it is that saith to thee, give me to drink, thou wouldst have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. Wow. Jesus even spoke of her about her failed marriages. She'd been uh, divorced five times and was living with the man when Jesus met her at the well and saved her soul, called her to be an evangelist and revealed a compassionate, caring interest in her life. So Jesus cares. Cast all your burdens, cares upon him for he cares for you. Uh, the focus of God becomes the focus of Satan. The future of every person is determined by, well, the future of every man is determined by the woman he trusts. Think about that one. <laughs> and the vice versa. And the path of favor is the will of God. So there's just some wisdom principles. Still waiting on my books. Hopefully they'll come in, but we have enough wisdom principles to keep us live until then. Now let's get right into the message. I know everybody's time is precious. I appreciate you tuning in. Appreciate all you're doing for us to help us grow and reach more people on Facebook Live. I want to preach tonight just for a few minutes on Jesus is the only way. Now, in Isaiah, I'm not going to read the entire chapter of Isaiah 35. It's only 10 verses. But it is the prophecy concerning how the earth will be when Jesus reigns from the city of Jerusalem, from the throne of David, for a thousand years, he'll rule the whole world. It's called the millennial reign of Christ. Um, Isaiah makes a statement in uh, verses 5 through 8. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap as a heart, and the tongue of the dumb sing, for in the wilderness shall waters break out and streams in the desert. There's a book, a, a best-selling book called Streams in the Desert. And the parched ground shall become a pool, and the thirsty land springs of water, and the habitation of dragons where each lay shall be grass with reeds and rushes. Now look at verse 8. And a highway shall be there. A way. And it shall be called the way of what? What's the word of God say? The way of holiness. You know, Jack, Dr. Jack used to preach. And sometimes he'd make that statement. He'd say, don't get mad at me. I didn't write the book. God did. And, it, and holiness is a Bible word. <laughs> Amen. Then the unclean shall not pass over it, but shall be for those the wayfaring men through 
though fools shall not err therein. The way of holiness. So we see here, if you'll look over it now at John 14, 6, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And Jesus still means that and always will mean that. He is the only way to heaven. He is the only way to be saved, the Lord Jesus Christ. So we see Jesus is the way. Now in these verses in John 14, 1 through 6, Jesus is, uh, is really just letting them know what the future holds for them and him. He's getting ready to die for our sins, conquer death, hell, and the grave, uh, ascend into the, uh, the center of the earth, an empty paradise, and uh, go to some of the regions of the pit of hell. And then he's going to ascend back to heaven after he's seen of his disciples and other followers for 40 days. And when he goes to a, go back into heaven, where he's been for the last 2,021 years as our great high priest, our advocate, our prayer intercessor, and many and much, much more. Uh, he promises them that he'll send the Holy Spirit, but he also promises them that he's going to prepare a place for them and he's going to come again and receive them unto himself that where he is, we will be also. That's the rapture of the church. Now, in these verses here in John 14, we have the broken heart of the disciples. Um, they are troubled, they are agitated, but Jesus says, I will not leave you comfortless. In other words, he'll send the Holy Ghost, God the Holy Spirit. Uh, that word comfortless literally means orphans, uh, but for the broken hearts with blessed assurance and promises, he promises them a better home. You know, heaven is a real place with real people, a prepared place for a prepared, saved, redeemed, born again people, a better home in the glory world, and he promises that he's coming again to uh, rapture and snatch his people out of this out of this world and take us into heaven. That's called the rapture. And and so you know, I I read this. Doctor John Phillips said that the coming again of Jesus is mentioned one thousand eight hundred and forty five times in the Old Testament alone. I know all of this is y'all probably already know all of this. <laughs> 30, 318 times in the New Testament. So over 2,100 times God tells his people in the world that his son is going to return again to the earth. I think it must be important important on his calendar, wouldn't you think? Uh, so 27 of the 39 Old Testament books of the Word of God, the Bible, mention the return of Christ. And 17 of the 27 New Testament books mention the return of Christ. I think, and I know, we need to be a ready people for the Lord when he returns. We need to be ready by being redeemed, by putting our trust in Jesus Christ alone for our salvation. So in Isaiah 35, if you were to compare the Old Testament books as mountain ranges, uh, Isaiah 35 is a very attractive mountain peak in the Word of God. Uh, it describes the wonders of Israel's bright future and the world's bright future and how the blessings of God will come upon and to his people during the 1,000-year reign of Christ. And the message of Isaiah 35 still thrills the souls of every born-again believer in Jesus as their personal mess, uh, mess, uh, Messiah and Savior. So let me give you uh, uh, four little points and quick points, and I'll be done with the message. And I hope you're enjoying these messages on names of Christ and the Word of God. We've got a long way to go, and but we'll get there sooner or later. Number one, it, the way is predicted. I've already read in the Old Testament that Isaiah 35 uh, predicts the 1,000-year reign of Christ after he returns to this earth to set up his 1,000-year reign kingdom that covers the whole earth after he defeats the Antichrist and the nations of the earth and the devil and uh, that's at the end of the seven-year tribulational antichrist reign upon the earth, and he will set up his kingdom. We see that uh, Isaiah 35 is full of delightful utterances. It's a great light shining in a great darkness, and it's a beacon of hope, and we need that so much today to encourage us weary, uh, weary uh, saints to continue our pilgrimage in the midst of a dark world. And so... <clears throat> it's impossible, 
Isaiah, if you read the book of Isaiah, it's impossible for you not to recognize God's way and God's highway to Lord Jesus Christ. It's impossible. Dr. Lester Roloff used to say if he had the Old Testament, he would pick the book of Isaiah to preach the gospel out of. That's the only book of the Bible he had to at his disposal because uh, Isaiah is an evangelist telling folks about the Lord Jesus Christ and salvation found in the Lord alone. So we see here that way. You notice the Bible said in Isaiah 50 and Isaiah 35 about this way of holiness, the way of the Lord. Now we know Jesus is the way because he said he was and he is. We see that that, that text in Isaiah 35 could also be translated a clear way shall be there. In other words, there's, got, there's no doubt God's way to heaven, Jesus Christ. There's no doubt about it. It's, it's a clear way. It's a well-marked way shall be there. It's a, 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 a the, and I was trying to look at that word. I really can't even read my own writing. Uh, but there will be a way that's well-trodden. You know, there's that gospel song, that hymn that says, though many have, millions have come, there's still room at the cross for you. And so we see a way predicted, prophesied, uh, and fulfilled in Jesus Christ. Uh, I like what one preacher said, that many travelers have used it. <laughs> Amen, and I'm one of them, and I hope you are too. Number two, the way proclaimed. Now, in John 14, 1 through 6, I'm going to read it to you. Let not your heart be troubled. Come on, somebody. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. Not a room, a mansion. <laughs> if it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Can you imagine how beautiful your mansion is going to be? God's been working on it for over 2,021 years. Think about that. Um, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. And that's a promise of the Lord. He's coming again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas said to him, Lord, we know not where to go, where you go. And then Jesus looked right at him and said, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Uh, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. So we see here the way uh, is proclaimed. Uh, Isaiah had a powerful ministry. I'm preaching it tonight out of the book the Holy Ghost led him to write, inspired him to write. Isaiah 35 is a powerful ministry uh, describing the powerful ministry of the Lord, his saving ministry, his delivering ministry, his healing ministry, his teaching and preaching ministry, everything about Jesus and, st and still is about Jesus is powerful. The lame walking, the dead coming back to life, the death hearing, the mute speaking, the diseased healed, the blind seeing, the death hearing. And so we see Jesus not only blesses in this life as we are you know, on our pilgrimage to heaven, but he also promises us life to come. Not only deliverance here, but eternal deliverance from the pit of hell into the glory world, heaven, eternal happiness. So Jesus is the known way, the trusted way. It is Jesus is the clearly marked way. And here's here's what's so awesome about it. It's for whosoever will. And it's with that, it's a gift. And we hope that you have uh, accepted Christ's offer of eternal salvation in him alone. Uh, so we see the way proclaimed. Number three, we see the way procured. Now, uh, even tonight on our little broadcast, and probably in many churches around the world, just uh, the way John 14, 6 was proclaimed today. Jesus was proclaimed today. Jesus, the Savior of the world, was lifted up as he's being lifted up on all of our broadcasts. Uh, Hebrews 10 Verses 19 and 20 calls Jesus a new and living way. Isaiah 35 verse 8 invites everybody to be saved in Jesus Christ, including fools. 
They are allowed into God's presence through his forgiveness in Christ and only in Christ. Throughout the Old Testament, only the, great, uh, the, the high priest could enter into the holies of holies once a year to sprinkle the blood for himself and the believers in the Lord, the people of God on the mercy seat. Uh, but now Jesus Christ has opened up uh, a new way. He is the way. He's the great high priest. And now anybody can come to Jesus in repentance and trust in him as their personal Lord and Savior and enter right into the presence of God. That's awesome. We don't need a priest, a pope, a preacher. All we need is Jesus. And that's all you need, friend. And that's all I need is him. So we see the way procured. And then we see the way practiced. And I'll be done. In the early church, uh, believers in the Lord were called Christians. They were called followers of the way. That's what it used to be called. To follow. If you were saved back in the early church days, and lost people would look at you and say, he's one of the followers of, of the way. <laughs> Talk about Jesus. They, they would say, of this way. So Paul, uh, when he was Saul of Tarsus, before he got saved, he literally tried his best to crush out Christianity. He put people to death. He was, he was in charge of killing the Holy Ghost, the first martyr in the word of God for Christ's uh, ministry. Uh, it was Stephen. It was Paul who had, uh, his name was Saul before he got saved. But he was even going to arrest Christians when the Lord met him on the road to Damascus and turned him in from a persecutor to a preacher. Only God could do such amazing miracles. Paul, in Acts 9, 2, called it of this way. And then when he was standing in the Ephesus riots, you know, Paul, wherever Paul went, there either was a revival or a riot. <laughs> and when he opened his mouth for God, demons and all the hells, it was a battle to the death. And of course, Paul ended up being uh, killed for the faith in Jesus Christ too. Acts 19.9, in the middle of the Ephesus riots, he said, of that way, talking about Christians. And then when he was standing before King Felix in Acts, I believe 26, can't read my own writing. He said this, a more perfect knowledge of that way. Paul said, Jesus is the way. And people knew what he was talking about. And uh, so we see here uh, the way, a more perfect knowledge. And there's no perfect, perfect knowledge other than Jesus. Uh, we see that Jesus created new doctrines, new power, new demands, new, so, uh, new social status. A new way, which is a voluntary uh, access of your own free will to join and trust Christ. Uh, but our pilgrimage has a destiny that's sure. We don't need no signposts like we do when driving our cars. If you've trusted Christ, you know the personal way to heaven. And so we hope tonight that you have trusted Christ as your Savior and he is your way. Because he is the only way to heaven. I hope you enjoyed that message. And uh, next Sunday night, we'll come right back and uh, preach another sermon on the Lord, names of Jesus in the Bible. All right, let's see if we have any. I'm um, getting my, uh, all my books in order here. I'm trying to be a little cleaner. I'm doing a lot better at it. Turn to Psalms 91. We'll be quoting that in just a minute at the end of the broadcast. All right, let's look at, let's do some praise reports first. Now, I'll give you a minute now. This is what I want you to, if the Lord's done something for you, we want you to put it in the comment section where people can see it and I can acknowledge it vocally on the broadcast. So go ahead and put your praise reports and then your prayer request. And I'm going to take a sip of my tea. Oh, man, that's good. I sure would like to have a big piece of Bojangles chicken right now. I heard a voice from the other side of the trailer that said there's chicken in the fridge. 
Hallelujah. All right, let's see if we have any praise reports. Praise the Lord for second chances. Absolutely. All right. We do got some. Praise the Lord. Second chances. You can put prayer request also right now. Pray for my brother-in-law, John. He's got cancer and now COVID. Pray for him and his family. Lord have mercy. Uh, so uh, I've got some here. Sister Tammy uh, in Georgia. She hurt her back on before church. And we I anointed and prayed for her uh, before church. She lives in the great state of Georgia. So pray for S Sister Tammy. State of Georgia. She hurt her back. Hopefully the Lord's already healed her by now. Amen. Uh, also, uh, Jimmy James, he watches our broadcast during the week. Uh, I don't know what state he's from, but his wife needs the touch of the Lord. He had said to pray for his wife. And Pam in North Carolina says right here, her brother-in-law, John, has cancer and COVID. So we pray the Lord's healing for him and his family. And her mom. Uh, Pam, is your mother's name Joanne? I believe it is. If, if it is, let me know. Uh, so Pam's mother, I believe it is Joanne, folks. Pray for her healing. Let's see here. Praise God for he is the King of kings and Lord of lords. Amen. A lot of people saying amen. Love the comments. and Love this uh, the conversation among the saints of God here. We're not a church. We're just a gathering. <laughs> Amen. Gathering. <laughs> Hallelujah. It means praise the Lord in every language. Pam says, Glory, I got a mansion. Yes. You know, there's an old song. There's a roof up above me. I've got a good place to sleep. There's food on the table, shoes on my feet. You ever heard that song? You gave me your love, Lord, in a fine family. Well, how, what's the wording? Yes, my wife's in there singing. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me. <laughs> what's the other words? Some of them. Uh, yeah, I know that I'm not wealthy and these clothes are not new. I know I don't have much money. <laughs> but, Lord, we have you. Amen. Amen. All right. I was supposed to be preaching and singing. <laughs> Glory, I got a mansion. I've got a mansion. Uh, there, there's a song called I've Got a Mansion. Sister Catherine Baines, good to have you tonight. Pray for Poncho. Also, he's had a fever of 100 the last two days. Yes, he's still got the flu there, but we pray for Poncho. Pam's husband has a fever. We pray in Jesus' name it will break to, as we're praying right now in the name of Jesus and the fever will go away. Let us know what the Lord does. All right. Sister Cat, you got a new dog? I saw a video. Do you got a new puppy? <laughs> Amen. Uh, all these comments, love them. Poncho refuses to go to the doctor, but we know the greatest doctor of all. Well, the good news is Hanley Milby preached it. You can find it on the internet. Jesus, Dr. Jesus makes house calls. <laughs> Amen. He makes house calls. So just call on him. Go in there if you believe the Bible and believe in Jesus. Go in there and get oil for yourself and anoint yourself and watch God heal you. Amen. Yeah, I've got a lot of comments. Keep them coming here. This is good. All right, I'll give my praise report here in just a minute. Let's see if we have more comments. Joanne is your mother's name. That's what I thought. Uh, Pam says, I love that song. Me and Granny used to sing it in church. Amen. Uh, amen. Anybody else have comments? All right, I have a praise report. We had, uh, there's only two times a week that I ask for financial support. Uh, 
for two two things. One, some people give when you send offerings, either by Facebook, pay our secure line. Some of you use it, or you have connections with us other ways or through the mail. When you do send offerings in, just make sure you mark it love love offering for the Cordells or love offering for the outreach. Uh, we had a, in my opinion, a very huge offering come in this week. Uh, and uh, I, had, I asked her, do you want it for use for my wife? And I, because some people give to help because we share the word of God to the people or uh, to the outreach. And this time she said the outreach. So it, it will help us big time. Uh, there's uh, one preacher that I follow, and I'm just waiting on the right timing, the Holy Ghost timing. He has a, they call it a tablet or an iPad or something. And he has 500 of his books for uh, $500. That's a dollar a book. He's given them away. He's written over 1,300 books. I hadn't even written a chapter of a book. He's, he's already wrote 1,300 books. You can learn from somebody that's got 1,300 books. So uh, I, that's that would be a big blessing for our, our outreach here because I will have it on an iPad and 50 books. He's a great author, by the way. And uh, so I'm waiting... That's probably what I'm going to buy next for uh, for us. And you say, well, you'll be reading it. Well, you'll be getting the information. It'll be for both of us. Uh, we're learning together. We got some uh, other. So we want to praise the Lord for salvation. And we want to praise the Lord for the offering sent to us. For the outreach side so we'll be able to to uh really help folks that watch us i want y'all when y'all leave these broadcasts to say you know i learned a lot today that's the goal of is for us to, as christians to learn and there's so much to learn a learner is a leader and so uh sister catherine ba yes that's your you got you a new puppy. <laughs> Amen. And, uh, okay, Mandy Henderson Cordell. <laughs> uh, she says, anoint yourself for David Bradley. Yes, David Bradley's having a hard time. He has, he just needs a miracle from the Lord. So we write down David Bradley. Anybody else want to be anointed? Put anointing in the comment section. I'm getting ready to pray with you. David Bradley for healing and total recovery and for his family and his wife. Anybody want to be anointed? All right. I'm going to get my anointing. Oh, who? Yes, Freddie Cook. And Mary Threadgill. Healing of cancer. All right, there's the oil sent to me by Richard Roberts, Oil Roberts' son. Anointed in the name of the Father, the Son, the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. Amen. We obey the Word of God. We believe the Word of God. The book of James, chapter 5. We believe the Lord is able to forgive any sin and for also heal any disease if He chooses to. Let's put our hands in connection up to the screen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we corporately agree in prayer and we give all of these people to you that have COVID and cancer, heart problem, whatever it is, Lord, we pray. If we're praying according to your will, we know that you will answer. We pray healing and salvation and provision and everything that these people need. Save the soul nearest to hell, reclaim the prodigals, fill us with the Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name, bless anybody that's doing anything for you in the world. And bless that person who gave that large offering this week to the outreach. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yes. Yes. Anybody else have a comment? All right. You got your Bible turned to Psalms 91. We're getting ready to shut it down. 
please hit the share button, like button, and everything else. Thank you for sending out notices. Tomorrow between 11.30 and 12 noon, that's Eastern Standard Time because I live in the eastern part of the great United States of America. Uh, we uh, will be on between 11.30 and 12 tomorrow with a word for the word broadcast. We're working our way verse for verse through the book of Acts. And Mark, while you're on here, I'll go ahead and give you the scripture. Shout out to Brother Mark for daily sending us materials for each lesson. And I think Acts chapter 2, verse 42 through 47, Mark. Acts 2, 42 through 47. Mark, if you got that, amen. Dr. Jack used to say, I'm glad I got something I could feel when I got saved. <laughs> we call that Holy Ghost Breeze. All right, that's Acts 2, 42 through 47. That's what Sister Pam says. She felt the spirit pass through the prayer. <laughs> like that cool breeze, amen, that voice behind you saying, go that way, go this way. That small, still voice. Right. Like Judy Jacobs saying, send the rain, Lord, send the fire. <laughs> amen. All right. Okay, now back to Psalms 91. Now we want to give you the three ways before I pray the prayer over our our offerings that we send to help. Like I said, make sure you let me know what you want it used for, outreach or our personal use to help us meet our needs as we minister to things of the Lord. Make sure you, when you send your offerings, you let me know where to, it goes. Outreach or for the Cordells. Um, uh, here's the three ways you can send your support in. Uh, the P.O. Box, pound sign 211-3740, Boiling Springs Highway, Boiling Springs, South Carolina, 29316. That's pound sign 211-3740, Boiling Springs Highway, Boiling Springs, South Carolina, 29316. Then, of course, the other address is 119 Terry, T-E-R-R-Y Avenue. That's 119 Terry, T-E-R-R-Y Avenue, Emmons, I-N-M-A-N, South Carolina, 29349. Emmons, South Carolina. That's I-N-M-A-N, South Carolina, 29349. Uh, had another prayer request come up on the screen, laid it before the Lord in Jesus' name. Pastor's wife, Sister Libby Bullman Thornton needs prayers for her shoulder. In Jesus' name, remove the swelling right now, the pain away. Amen. All right, in Jesus' name. So there's the two ways you can send your offerings in that way. The third way is you go to your messenger, click on your profile pic, scroll down to our secure line on Facebook. And uh, many of you that do send us offerings from time to time have used it, and it is secure. It, uh, once you send it, it comes immediately to us. It's not like you send it in the mail. It may take a week. It may take three days. It may take two weeks to get to me. But if you do the face secure line on Facebook, live, Facebook, the messenger and your profile pic, it'll come to us immediately. We get notified as soon as you send it, and we notify you as soon as you send it and we receive it. So that's the three ways. If you need to address us again, you can wait about 20 minutes after I sign off and this will be on my wall. You can go to the end of the broadcast and uh, get our addresses. Amen. Man, felt the Lord tonight. Feeling a little better, but I'm still tired. So I'll, I basically just kind of hang around when I'm off. Don't do a whole lot. All right. You have your Bibles on Psalms 91. You can still put prayer requests up as I'm reading. And if I see them up on the screen, the people that pray over our outreach will pray, and then we'll pray together. Psalms 91, most Bible scholars say Moses wrote this one under the Holy Ghost's inspiration. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. 
I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the noise of pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings shall you trust. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the air that flies by day, nor for the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor for the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand shall fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you behold and see the reward of the wicked, because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the most high, your habitation. There shall no evil befall you, neither shall any plague come near your dwelling, for he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. They shall bear you up in their hands, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion, the adder, the young lion, the dragon shall trample under feet. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me. I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. In Jesus' name, we declare and decree and claim these verses over our personal lives, Lord Jesus, our family and friends. In Jesus' name, amen. So we hope that you enjoyed the broadcast tonight. And uh, I got all my, got everything ready for tomorrow. That's our broadcast tomorrow at 11.30 to 12. Once again, thank you again for the ones that do support us financially on a personal level or the outreach side. Uh, the Lord, uh, it's been slow going, but we're doing okay. And one thing about it, I don't have, I know this is going to sound terrible to say, uh, for 20 something years, always, you always got to hear people about what you teach and preach. Uh, you know, uh, on here, I just do what I want. <laughs> You know, hey, uh, <laughs> do what I want. And, you know, if you like it, you like it. <laughs> you, don't, you, you don't, you don't. Amen. But uh, praise the Lord. But uh, I'm looking forward to tomorrow, just resting. And uh, I, was look, I was looking, it was like the Holy Spirit just spoke to me and said, somebody else needs to put a comment. So here's your chance. I was getting ready to say my good night, my God bless you and everybody. But if you're supposed to comment in that comment section, even if it's just whatever it is the Lord wants you to share, uh, I'm going to give you time to type it. And then I'm on after that, we're going to close it down for tonight. Um, you know, I have people ask me, you know, are you going to start a church one of these days? Probably. Who knows? I don't know. The Lord knows. Uh, I hope I live a long life. I'm only 58 years old, so it's no rush. God's no rush. I just want to do what he wants me to do. Uh, I'll always do my Facebook Lives and my Instagram and my YouTube. That will be done regardless of what I do. Uh, I like coming on here and keeping in touch with people. And, uh, oh, okay, preach it the way the Lord gives it to you. Well, there you go, folks. And uh, I remember one time, just to show you how you know, people can be something. I was pastoring up in North Carolina. And listen, I preached a solid, I believe, year, nothing but Mays Jackson outlines. And if you don't know who Mays Jackson is or was, he's in heaven now. He's one of the greatest evangelists ever hit the earth. So Dr. Jack told me, he said, the first year you're at uh, name the church, I was going to pastor. I want you to preach nothing but Mays Jackson outlines. Well, I preached a solid year. We had people saved, healed, delivered. God was blessing, but well, the devil was battling, but we was being blessed to the Lord. And one of my, uh, on the deacon board, I'll say that came to me and he said uh, I don't get much out of that, work them outlines I said well ain't that something he said what do you mean I said the greatest preacher in America one of the greatest preachers in America 
I've been preaching his outlines for a year and you don't get nothing out of that type of preaching. I said, so that goes to show you, I don't, I don't have no board sitting over here telling me I don't have to listen to it. I just like Pam just said, uh, oh, the rooster sermon. Yeah, I got that from Johnny the Baptist. You can, he's got a website. He's an independent Baptist, got saved under Mays Jackson's preaching. Uh, you can go to Johnny the Baptist on the computer, Google him, Yahoo him, or whatever, and he'll come up and you can hear some of the greatest preachers of now and the past on Johnny the Baptist. I got that sermon from him, the rooster sermon. You like the rooster sermon? Uh, it's on that website, but, uh, but, uh, praise the Lord. So appreciate you, Pam, following the Holy Ghost right there. We're praying healing and, uh, for your family that COVID went through there. COVID's still out there, folks, running around. And just wash your hands and keep the distance. Uh, I'm just amazed. I mean, I'm not saying I won't get it, but I'm doing all I can in my own practical ways to make sure I don't. Um, you know, the six foot and all that, It, I believe it makes a difference. I mean, I'm not no medical doctor. Uh, but uh, keep your distance out there. Wash your hands. Use the wisdom. If you're sick, go to the doctor. And quarantine yourself if you get it. And then go back to the doctor after whatever the days. I think it's 14 days. And then let the doctor give you the test. And if you're negative, you go around and go back to normal living. If not, you know, there's some people you just got to. God put doctors here, people, for humanity, for us. They're, they're much needed. And uh, so go to the doctor. Either that or die. There's your choice. <laughs> Because up here in Spartanburg, there's people as healthier or than me that when they get this COVID, it really is bad stuff. So go to the doctor. Head it off early. And uh, so I'm just trying to help you uh, out there. Use your wisdom. And uh, so I'm. Uh, uh, let me give you an announcement here. Uh, remember Tuesday night. At 8 p.m., what is Tuesday night? Can somebody quote, type in what you think? And it'll take like, give you 30 seconds. What do we do on every Tuesday night? What is it called at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time? What is it called? I'll type it in for you. <laughs> International Prayer Meeting. That's what we do every Tuesday night on here. Uh, every Tuesday night at what time? 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Now, that's an advertisement. There you go. My wife typed it in, International Prayer Meeting. Clay Cordell is on self typing in. <laughs> So spread the word. And we are studying a book. This is why it's important these offerings come in to help me buy books. Look at this little book. Wisdom Keys for a Powerful Prayer Life. Um, we're going through this book on International Prayer Meeting. And I'm preaching a sermon on the names of Christ. Amen. Another one in the Bible. So, uh, Make sure you tune in Tuesday night. All uh, right, Tim Neely. Uh, uh, Brother Tim Neely says, let me get my prayer list out. I didn't put it up. But. Prayer list. Tim Neely just got out of the hospital. Okay. Went through a, uh, a rough time with COVID and this and that. Uh, he says, uh, Tim, Brother Tim. Knee, Neely. Keep my keep him and his father-in-law, Junior Blanchard, in prayers. All right, we will. And brother Tim, uh, uh, let me make, brother Timothy. I call him br brother Neely. Um, yeah, thank you, Sister Pam. You t put it in there. Pray. Um, 
Tam Neelum said that he actually saw the gates of the glory world before he got sent back here this past week. Heaven's a real place. Hell's a real place. And the only way you can escape hell is to trust Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Yes. Father, in the name of Jesus, we anoint for Tim and his family and Junior, his father-in-law, Junior Blanchett, in Jesus' name. Heal, deliver, provide everything they need. Amen, Jesus. There's the oil. See when it little isn't that a good little idea? Don't y'all think that's a good idea? You can have the oil. I keep it right here in front of the computer. And like in, here's another thing. Rod Parsons sent me this. I have this in my inside my suit coat. It's got his initials on it. Rod Parson. And I it's a point of contact. Paul used it. You know, anoint and give it to people. Point of contact right there inside the old pocket there. Amen. Okay, everybody. If the Lord, did we pray over the offering? We didn't. Father, everyone out there that does support us, my wife and I personally, or the outreach side, we pray Luke 638 on them. And then we pray, Lord, that you, uh, if you touch somebody's heart to send us a love offering this week, we pray you will bless them in big time ways. Thank you for all meeting our needs and blessing us. We look to you alone, but we know you work through people. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right, everybody. I'd love to hear his testimony. Well, I had a lady write me her email, me her testimony. Cordell Clayton at yahoo.com. That's Cordell Clayton at yahoo.com. We'd love for some more testimonies to be written down or sent by email. Uh, short testimony or long. Uh, I will read it on the next broadcast. So that's right. He sent me a prayer. Amen. There you go. Uh, Tim uh, texted me at 430 this morning, told me that he saw the button. Now listen, there's, here's the testimony of Tim Neely that he told the pastors, our pastor's wife. This is what she's saying. Now I want to read this to you. You can read it there yourself, I think. He texted me at 4.30 this morning and told me that he saw the brightest lights he'd ever seen and then came back. That's, that's, that's pretty close to the glory world. Amen. I, I, well, at least he was seeing the lights. Amen. That means you're headed in the right direction. <laughs> he says he wants to share with all of us. I told him amen. That's exactly right. All right, we've enjoyed. I felt the Holy Ghost when I read that right there. I'm going to read that again. It's a, listen to this, what he says. He says, Tim texted me at 4.30 this morning. Now listen. And told me that he saw the bright, my goodness. He saw the brightest lights. Now who's the light of the world? <laughs> no need to the sun because he's the light of the city. He said, when well, he saw the brightest lights he'd ever seen, and then he came back. He says he wants to share with all of us, and I told him, amen. Amen. Glory, how did Pam, did you feel that? Did you feel that, Mandy, when Sister Olivia sent that testimony just now? The third watch of the night. Listen, God walked on the storm between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. in the Word of God, and I preached a sermon. Pam remembers that sermon called the fourth watch of the night. Amen. Amen. Was well, the third watch. Four, one of them watches. And uh, Pam, you remember that sermon? Amen. Mark. Amen. Mark says, Amen. From the state of Virginia. Saw the brightest lights of Mark he'd ever seen. And then he came back here. I got do dads bigger than uh, hog skin. What do they call it? Goosebumps, as the old preachers used to say. Amen. <laughs> Whew, Lord have mercy he saw the greatest light brightest lights he'd ever seen and he came back here I think I'd have been happy I'm back but maybe a little bit depressed <laughs> uh. alright folks sorry to keep you so long enjoyed this beautiful testimonies beautiful fellowship I'm going to go in here and rest a little bit have a blessed night. He just saw Jesus. There's a gospel song called that. And he probably did. 
If it was the brightest lights he'd ever seen, he's the light of the city. <laughs> Amen. And uh, tomorrow night I will share with you a personal testimony of Dr. Jack Laster and Tim Green. Tony Green, who used to sing with the Greens Gospel Southern Gospel group. When all Gaithers and everybody knows, you know the Greens. They used to be a Southern Gospel group. Um, we're going. I'm going to share a testimony tomorrow night about what t Tony told Dr. Jack in a dream. Uh, he came. Tony's in, been in heaven. Uh, Jack's there now, and uh, Tony came to him in a dream and begged him to come to heaven with him. Was begging him in a dream. He held out his hand. I'm going to let y'all in. Now, this is Holy Ghost stuff. I'm going to let you in on a little secret. And this is something you need to share with people. If the Lord sends somebody that you know from heaven in a dream or whatever, and they ever reach out their hand to you, now listen to me. Dr. Jack told me this. Like, say I come to you, it would be a nightmare to some of you. Say, I'm, say you're sleeping and all of a sudden, ooh, I come in a white sheets <laughs> and i'm talking to you saying it's beautiful up here and all of our loved ones are up here and jesus is here and and then you want to come and if they reach their hand out to you if you grab it you're gone I, that's what they tell me i, I got do dads all over me and that's what jack said tony came to him in a dream and was describing heaven and the millions of people worshiping around the throne and he was trying to tell Jack how beautiful. He said, I, I can't even come up with the words, Brother Jack, to tell you how. We've sung about it. We've preached about it. There is nothing like being in heaven. And he said he stopped and he looked. He looked and Tony Green reached out his hand and said, take my hand and come with me. And Jack said, oh, I'm not ready. <laughs> and when he wasn't ready. He said, I'm not about to grab that hand. <laughs> I don't blame him. You'd have been gone, brother. <laughs> It had been history, but praise the Lord. Thank God that was a redeemed child of God came to Jack. Could have been if the arch enemy comes to, you know, amen, to get those doodads. Sounds like Jesus to me. <laughs> he had a Mandy. Oh, my goodness, folks. We need this. We got so much bad news going on. There's a lot of people out there doing so. You can tune into their broadcast. I wish them God's blessings. We, we need, I, I work around people that are just no hope. This is all they got to look forward to. This is all week, every day. And it's good to come to ministries and hear testimonies and how God is doing signs, wonders, and miracles. and Not for others only, but for you, if you'll put your faith and trust in Jesus. All right. All right, everybody. God bless you. God bless the United States of America. God bless the Jewish people in the nation of Israel. Pray for their salvation like everyone else in every nation. And there's 188 nations on the earth. And slowly but surely, that's why I tell you that if you're watching from another country, let us know what country. The other night we had somebody from East Ta East Africa, Tanzania. Uh, so she, this lady uh, put on the, uh, let me know where she watches from. And we put a pin up there. I'm looking over my corner. I can see a pin in Australia. Y'all see that Australia over there? Well, my head's in the way. You see all those pins in India, Far East, Flip. Fi We've had them from China. Nobody from China yet, Russia. But God's going to open doors there on Facebook for us. So God bless you. God bless America. God bless the nation of Israel and Jewish people. Remember, if you send an offering in, either by Facebook uh, pay or uh, by mail, or some of you are connected with us on other ways. If you'd like to be connected, I, that other way is for people I know personally. So if I know you, um, just contact us and we'll send you, we'll set up something for you. Uh, but uh, amen. Praise the Lord. Getting there. Yeah. All right. We'll see y'all tomorrow. If you're able to tune in live or anytime. We're praying for you. Pray for us. See you.